Alright, let's have a look now at how you could change the speed or the resolution of the sequencer. In order to do so, you drag the Track Sequencer Clock button to select a new resolution. The change won't take effect unless you release the mouse. This way you could time the change just right. And if you'd like to just cycle a particular section of the song, just click and drag the Track Sequencer Cycle area. For now, I'll set it back to cycle normally through steps 1 through 16. Let's take a quick look at the Select Toggle button. It is a really useful and innovative feature which allows us to select portions of the track sequencer area to copy-paste and or randomize by using an extra graphic layer. When I click the Select Toggle button, you see an area of the sequencer highlighted in white. This is the part of the sequencer area that we could copy-paste and randomize. I could click the Mod B tab, select the first half, and hit the Randomize button. Let's try this with the other sequencer pages by tabbing through and hitting Randomize. Notice how the x-axis of the randomize button allows me to control the randomization amount. When clicking towards the right, I get more randomization than if I click towards the left. If I like the randomized pattern, I could copy-paste it anywhere I like on any track. Let's copy the first half of the Mod B sequence to the second half by selecting it, choosing Sequencer Current from our Copy Paste menu so that we're just copying the selection of the current tab and paste it into the second half by selecting and hitting Paste. You can even paste it on another track if you want, but right now that's unnecessary, so I will clear it by using the Clear button. So far, we've learned about 85% of the instrument. We learned to use the four sequencer tabs to draw into the different sequencer pages. We learned how to set up parameter modulators using left click and drag to select and right click and drag to control the amount. And lastly, we learned to select, cut, copy, paste, and randomize. The information so far can be applied to all six tracks and their samplers. Let's look at the last two modulation sources, LFO A and LFO B. Click on the LFO button and the display changes to show both LFO's parameters. Notice that LFO A is yellow and LFO B is blue. We can alter the LFO parameters and then set them up to modulate any track sampler parameters. Click on Controls to leave the LFO view and return to the main controls view. Let's select LFO A, yellow, as a modulation source and LFO B, blue, as well. Should you want to randomize the LFO settings, or any settings for that matter, check out the B view of the ensemble, which is both the main turn and another randomization page. <laughs> Lastly, let's look at the remaining options, namely the scene sequencer area. A scene is like a preset for the entire instrument. You could save eight scene presets labeled A through H. Everything I've done so far is stored in the current scene, scene A. Using the scene sequencer, you could arrange the order and speed that your scenes change within each reactor snapshot or preset. In other words, setting up the scene sequencer will allow us to build mini arrangements within each reactor preset. So, how does it work? I only have one scene right now, 
scene A. So I'd like to make a variation of scene A and save it to scene B to begin an arrangement. This is easy. Let's set up the scene cycle area to cycle between the first two scenes and set the second slot to scene B. Now we could go to the copy paste menu and select whole scene to copy the whole scene and then paste it when we get to scene B. You could set the speed at which the scenes change using the scene clock and you could reset the default order to A through H by clicking reset. I could continue to create new scenes using the same method or even by copying and pasting individual tracks or parameters between scenes using the additional copy paste menu functions. Have a look at the manual to learn more about these options. Twisted. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>